In 2019, uh, my family and I went to uh, Africa for an amazing adventure. And we're going to show you the sketchbook flip through of what I've done. This is one of the, um, well, my absolutely favorite sketchbook. Uh, so much memory as I flip through uh, this sketchbook. I hope you will enjoy it uh, as I enjoy making it for you. For this trip, I uh, took my Escoda uh, watercolor sketchbook. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, slightly bigger than A5. Um, and it's a portrait uh, sketchbook. Uh, and I decided not to use watercolor, but basically just stick with um, black and white ink. I have uh, my Twisby, uh, and which lasts a long time because I can load a lot of ink into it. Uh, and I was just having a ball with just um, drawing. We flew uh, on Air Ethiopia, uh, through Ethiopia to Tanzania. Uh, and I did, you know, try to break in my uh, sketchbook uh, by sketching uh, a couple in the uh, Addis Ababa airport and then of course I dive straight into the safari right after that uh, because that's what we uh, did uh, arriving in Tanzania and then you know uh, head out straight to the camp uh, we saw a lot of animals clearly uh, you know we have giraffes we have elephants we have lions by the way these photos were all taken uh, by me and I really enjoy being welcomed at the campsite. Uh, let me show you what happens when we arrive. Well, that's my wife uh, being completely tickled by the reception of uh, the very warm uh, campsite, I suppose. Amazing, right? Uh, we really enjoy each of the welcome. We went to a few camps and they were all the same. Dancing, arrival and so on. Amazing. As you can see, I even sketch um, Ben, uh, the chef. Well, he doubles up as a singer and a drummer <laughs> as well. And on the right page, uh, the right side of the page, uh, you will see we see a lot of acacia tree, very symbol, the very symbol of Africa, uh, and then lots of wildebeest and lots of warthogs. Uh, lots of them uh, and uh, certainly was a lot of fun being uh, in the midst but well, of course we were protected by the jeep right where we were sitting inside comfortably so yeah the first day itself it was an adventure it was eye-opening it was a lot of fun uh, in the Serengeti Africa well just a word about the jeep we were sitting uh, long hours inside this jeep and uh, there were only three of us me my wife and my daughter and uh, you know it's not like you can get uh, easy access to toilet so you do need to manage your toilet time very carefully but boy we had a lot of close encounter of the wonderful sword uh, where the animal come real close to the jeep and as you can see in this photograph, the giraffe was literally just a few meters away. Okay, I'm just going to continue talking about the sketches that I've done. Uh, you see next the toppy, uh, lots of them as well. Uh, they come in groups and it, well, actually it's not everywhere, but uh, when you see them, they come uh, in group. We see hippo uh, as well, lots of them uh, at uh, certain parts of river. And of course, ostriches, um, they usually appear in pairs, uh, male and female. Uh, and this is the female uh, ostrich and here's the male ostrich. Our guide Sudi was really good. I mean, he went hunting for animals that we have not seen and he purposely looked for them. And that's why I think it's very important to get a good guide. Um, I highly recommend Sudi from uh, Easy Travel. Well, the last sighting was the grey heron um, and they are uh, very lovely to look at. In fact, one of the things that I'm really impressed I'll come to that, are the birds of Africa. Okay, a word about the uh, scenery, the vista of Africa. It certainly did not disappoint. Uh, I mean, it is just stunning uh, what we saw. And the sunset, oh, it was just out of a, like out of a dream. Um, so it was an amazing trip, it was. And next is one of my favorite um, spread <laughs> it's a uh, very empty with lots of white spaces we saw a zebra with its baby tagging along i personally like zebra a lot i think they are just so beautiful the question is uh is it stripes black stripes on white or is it white stripes on black hmm. 
Well, next up, um, we saw lots and lots of birds. Uh, the African fish eagle is one, uh, and we really like that. Uh, they are usually perched right on top. And then the uh, the magpie uh, shrek, uh, shrike, uh, basically, uh, we see lots of that as well. Like I said, I was really impressed with the variety of birds uh, in Africa. Right, and the next spread um, is about uh, the uh, the vouchers and the olive baboons. Uh, the vouchers, they are sort of uh, the, the cleaner of uh, the safari. Um, I mean, they clean up the carcasses and they get rid of all sorts of uh, bacteria and keep it clean. Well, the baboons are just cheeky and they keep each other clean, I suppose, by picking, uh, you know, dirt and uh, insects or whatever it is off each other's uh, fur. The next spread, uh, more animals, elephants, uh, lion, water buff buffalo, and uh, leopard, uh, leopard on the tree. The right side of uh, the sketch is from this place called Nabi Gate. Uh, we stop plenty uh, for snacks, uh, tea, and so on. And I must say the travel and the stops were equally interesting. Now we are now uh, looking at the stork and the pelicans. Here you see a flight of uh, the yellow bill stork and here uh, two pelicans uh, on the tree. I really enjoy looking at the birds and uh, taking photographs of the birds too. Uh, if I could, I would just draw birds all day. It's so fun. The whole trip was really enjoyable, especially this lake where we are at the uh, Serengeti. Uh, because of the tortillas camp, um, we went to a few tortillas camp. They were really, really fun. They are individual camp, um, and they have even you know nice bed and hot water. Uh, the wild animals do come up right up to the outside of the tent, and there's one night where we heard lions just outside. Uh, so it could be really dangerous walking around. Uh, you need to get guide, uh, you know, to escort you. Uh, to go for dinner and so on. Uh, they have a common hall where you take your dinner and uh, this it looks like this. They serve wonderful food and uh, people are just really nice. And uh, again, uh, somewhere in the middle, they will sing and dance uh, for you as well. <laughs> After dinner, we usually sit around on a fireplace like this uh, where they put up a fire and have nice seat. Uh, we can order drinks um, and usually there's a guard nearby, a Maasai, and uh, I sketch one. I think this chap here called Dao, uh, Daoud. Uh, and yeah, and uh, we just enjoyed what they call the bush TV. And we spend many nights uh, watching bush TV, enjoying uh, the serene, calm evening. Now on the left spread, you'll find the silvery-cheeked hornbill. Um, and we saw a few of those up perched on a tree. And on the right, uh, sketches of roadside market uh, towards Serengeti. I must say that people really fascinate me. I mean, I, I took lots of photographs uh, as well, as you can see here. Uh, people just, you know, buying and selling vendors um you know family walking on the roadside uh and just you know their uh clothing and so on and so forth they really fascinate uh, me as an artist a sketcher yeah oh and one more thing about the camp is when we left uh the camp each camp the staff will also come out singing and that's one of the things i sketched here as well so yeah it's really enjoyable to <laughs> check in and out of the camp uh, because we went to a few of those camps uh, the tortillas camps in uh, Africa, uh, Serengeti. You see on the next spread here, our driver Sudi, very experienced guide, uh, keep chasing animals for us to see, especially those we have not encountered. Uh, he will go on the walkie-talkie, talk to his friends, and then you know drive uh, in you know very 
slightly aggressive way <laughs> to go see the animals. And one of the things we kept taking off were new birds that we've not seen before. Birds that were strange looking to us, at least to our eyes, uh, those of us who lived in Singapore, uh, in this part of, of the world. So here's the grey crowned crane. Uh, they look wonderful with the, you know, the headgear, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, the ibis, uh, the sacred ibis. Uh, the Egyptian worshipped them, I think, uh, of old. So yeah, the birds were absolutely fascinating. Uh, then uh, they have something that they call the five uglies. Um, and, you know, I sketched uh, these from various photographs. Uh, this is the marabou stalk. Uh, it does look very ugly <laughs> from uh, neck onward. This is the voucher, a very important species in the uh, Serengeti, Warthog. Uh, Actually, they look quite beautiful, actually. <laughs> the wild bees, uh, they usually go in a big herd. Uh, and the hyenas, so the five uglies, uh, as they are called, uh, of Africa. And at one point, Sudi was uh, getting us to chase the migration, and we saw a huge herd. Uh, I think they were heading west, and we were just chasing them, along with many other jeeps. It, it is something out of National Geographic, I think, <laughs> if you are, you know, just uh, listening to the sound and the hooves and so on, quite a sight. So that's the west migration of the Serengeti. Uh, next, I sketch some interesting trees, uh, Euphorbia ingens um, and the Baobab tree. Uh, those were very interesting. And the one on the right uh, would be the sausage tree or the Kigelia. Sudi actually picked uh, the fruit from the baobab tree and let us try it didn't really taste any uh, nice but at least we experienced that. Next would be uh, people we saw on the roadside uh, or wherever we drove by. Again people really fascinated me and uh, their clothings and uh, the way they walk, the way they carry stuff on their head or you know however they live basically it fascinates me to observe and to uh, really enjoy being in the midst uh, of different people in different culture. So that really wraps up our uh, trip uh, in the Serengeti and then you know we flew out uh, from uh, Tanzania back to Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Uh, we're gonna have another leg uh, of our visit of Africa in Ethiopia. But we had uh, the Sunday, uh, you know the day we were gonna fly off, uh, the Sunday uh, service in the morning, we went to an Anglican church near the hotel uh, in Arusha. That's where we were going to fly out from Tanzania. The service was lively and the singing was fantastic. Yeah, and just to give you a glimpse of the service, um, yeah, I kept uh, the service uh, bulletin. Uh, it's uh, here in, in my sketchbook. Uh, always a lovely experience, uh, memory to keep. Uh, as well because it is part journal part sketchbook and you know and so on and then we went to Ethiopia uh, that's this is our Ethiopian lake before I move on to uh, Lalibela which is the main aim of going to Ethiopia I will show you some of the things that we did uh, in Addis Ababa we took a day tour uh, of Addis Ababa we saw the city uh, the museum and had Ethiopian coffee of course as you know Ethiopia is where coffee originates the Ethiopian clearly loves their singing and their dancing and we were really enjoying the show. Then we flew from um, Addis Ababa to Lalibela, which is where uh, the main aim of our Ethiopian lake visit is. Um, and uh, one of the first stops that we did was this place and had uh, lunch. So this Ben Abeba place is an amazing, amazing place. As you can see, it's perched right on top of a cliff and it oversees the vista, which is an amazing view. Uh, let me show you that. As you can see, the vista is just stunning. You could see the winding roads uh, at the bottom uh, and you know there's lots of birds flying and chirping around my daughter just standing you know standing there and enjoying uh, 
what a wonderful view from uh, Maribela. Uh, this is at uh, Ben Abeba. That's the uh, restaurant name. So after the night's rest, uh, we then head out to our main attraction, Lalibela. Uh, Lalibela is this place where the church is carved downward. It's a piece of rock, but they didn't carve it sideways, but they carved it downward. It's uh, three stories of uh, three story building. Uh, church and then it's carved downward uh, you know which is a rock so where I'm taking a f this photo it's a uh, part of the rock that's been carved away and what's amazing is when you go inside some of these churches they are actually still worshippers and congregations and so on still uh, even up to today here of course a uh, holy man is resting yeah it really is amazing uh, of course, it's quite sad to see what's happening in Ethiopia with a civil war at the moment. Uh, but of course, right now on the left, you can see St. George, the most famous of uh, all the calf uh, churches. Yeah, and we even had the opportunity to attend uh, a service, a live service, um, uh, when we were heading to one of the church. It was happening right before us. <laughs> So I sketched some of those memories and put some notes, uh, including some observation of people living in that area. Um, and I was also very impressed with the birds of Ethiopia. I mean, I saw lots of birds. I can't name all of them, uh, but uh, they were all amazing. Um, I had my big Sigma uh, 60 to 600 <laughs> uh, mm camera lens, uh, and I really had a lot of fun aiming at uh, birds and you know i was just chasing chasing them <laughs> everywhere when with my camera wasn't with my sketchbook but uh, with my camera instead and then of course i sketched them uh you know after i've processed the photograph uh, and downloaded the photo the next stop after lalibela is uh, gondar uh, it's right now in the Re rebels hand uh, it's part of the amhara region which is in conflict uh, actually so we'll, I'm not sure when we can actually visit the place ever uh, again. I'm not sure because it is, uh, you know, in some way uh, dangerous, I suppose, um, while they are still having a civil war. Uh, but I'm glad we went. The place is still being used for celebration, but it also gives me a sense of like semi-ruin, if you like, a bit of a uh, Cambodia's Uncle Wat sort of a feeling. After Gondar, we went up the mountain to the highest peak of Africa, and and that's the, the Simeon Lodge. You know, we thought we were going to Africa, so we were completely unprepared for the cold. Uh, as it turns out, Simeon Lodge was really cold. This is our last uh, night. Well, not last night, second last night, but this is at the coldest <laughs> and the highest, highest African Lodge. Ooh. Oh, it's cold. Ching, are you cold? All right, let's go. Let's go. The thing is that we had the whole place to ourselves. Uh, in fact, there were no other visitors at this point. They told us it was low season. Not sure. Uh, but we enjoyed the entire place. Uh, the restaurant and, you know, the hotel. Just us. I saw some interesting art and I took photograph as I would <laughs> wherever I go, that is. Oh, Africa is so cold. Who would believe it? Not me. Now, we're going to start the fire. One of the f most famous uh, animal around this area is the Galada baboons. Uh, we watched a documentary of the Galada and then we saw lots of them uh, roaming around. We, we went quite close uh, actually with some. Uh, let me show you some of the photographs uh, of the baboons. The Galada eats uh, plants, uh, grass, 90% uh, of their diets are based on plants. So they have to constantly eat uh, to keep themselves uh, going. Basically, it's, uh, they need a lot of food throughout the day. They'll be scavenging and uh, and I think they eat some insects as well. But, uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, quite a sight to see uh, them combing through the land. Yeah, we took lots of hikes as well uh, when we were there. And uh, we really enjoyed uh, the plants and trees as well. Uh, after that, we went on uh, long car rides uh, and uh, well, this part wasn't as enjoyable if not for 
uh, the beautiful vista in front of us as well. We ended up uh, seeing the Blue Nile Fall, which is a, an amazing uh, sight. The name of the lake of this this fall? Yes, uh, Blue Nile Waterfalls. Blue Nile Waterfall. Yeah, comes from the lake. And before uh, electricity, all the rock water is here, yeah. which is covered water. by water in 15 years or more before. Well, at this point, we were staying at a place called the Kuraftu uh, uh, Resort and uh, we were starting to wind down, I suppose, to <laughs> ready ourselves to get back. This spread is from Addis Ababa. It's from when we landed and visited the city. Uh, so I kind of did a back. Uh, it's not really in chronological order, if you like. Uh, this is the National Museum of Ethiopia where Lucy is stored, I suppose, the bones of Lucy. So at this point, we were at the Lake Tana. Uh, and again, uh, we were staying at this place called the Kuraftu uh, Spa uh, Resort um, and it was a lovely place to stay and uh, you know, we saw wedding, the procession and then we saw lots of birds again. I was chasing birds all the time and at that point we were planning another short excursion into uh, one of the island on Lake Tana which uh, has uh, you know, uh, old monastery. We went to the Azwa Saint Mariam Church. And it's a three chamber. And, and 18th century. It draws all the canvas. Canvas, cotton. Okay. The canvas making band weaving. All right. Yeah. So this is wild coffee, huh? Yeah. yeah. There are more than 643 variety of coffee species grows in Ethiopia. But many you know the three types, Arabica, Abyssinica and Robusta. This is Arabica and also wild. Oh, Arabica, wow. Using for calling to monks during uh, dining time. Ah. In Ethiopian Orthodox believer, more than 186 days. Well, that was our last excursion. Um, and yeah, and that was it. And it was such an epic trip. Uh, so much memory. Um, oh, we saw that one very big rock. Uh, uh, hyrex, rock hyrex, huge, huge rat. <laughs> oh well, I think that's about all I can show you uh, from my Ethiopia and uh, lake of it. And that's the end of the sketchbook as well. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the sketchbook flip through uh, and maybe you'll make that trip someday or maybe you have already have uh, and it's a blast from your for your memory as well. So stay safe wherever you are. Bye for now.